Hey lovelies, welcome to episode nine of the journey of self-love through self-care. My name is Amy Mercado and I am the owner and producer of my company, The Mercado Method. I teach a variety of online classes, fitness and yoga, and I also do in-person classes as well. And I also do one-to-one -one coaching online and in person. So if you're interested, drop me a message below. And for those of you new to my channel, like please hit subscribe or follow me on my account on the podcast. Much appreciated. So today's episode is all about my boob journey. And for a lot of you know, you've known me as the Amy Mercado with really big boobies. And a lot of you have seen my journey over the last few years where I've had like my implants totally removed. So I did do a blog on this when I first had my implants out because I was so nervous um, about the transition and I didn't quite know how to handle questions potentially from people or how I felt about not having big breasts again. So I wanted to sort of go through this podcast, sort of go through the journey with you so you can sort of perhaps maybe there might be someone that's thinking about maybe having the implants out or maybe you've got implants in and you're really happy with them but you're sort of seeing someone that's sort of done the full cycle. So just to give you some background in info, when I was growing up, I generally was really wanting to have big boobies. Like my mum had big boobs, a lot of people that I was around had big boobs and as a kid, even then, I was like, there's a picture of me, I think I must have about six or seven, and I've got two massive balloons stuffed down my top and I had this thing about having big breasts. So. I guess from a young age, I was kind of obsessed with wanting to have big boobs. And as I kind of grew up, like went through puberty and stuff, my boobs just, they grew a little bit, but I guess I was what you'd call like a small AB cup. And it was almost like I was waiting for this big transformation to suddenly ping out these big tits and it just kind of never happened. And I couldn't quite figure out why it wasn't happening. But going into my history growing up, from a young age, I was vegetarian. So I wasn't having any iron in my diet or anything like that really. And I was probably what you'd call a bad vegetarian because back then um, there wasn't much information about not having certain foods in your diet. So I was already at a young age restricting what I was eating because that was my choice growing up. And from that sort of led to more of an obsession with foods and what I was eating and what I wasn't eating. And by the time I was 14, I was fully bulimic. So I was experimenting with taking laxatives, I was taking diuretics, I was taking speed to suppress my appetite. And the consequence of growing up with playing with, I guess, with foods and exercising a lot as well from a young age was my body had sort of taken a bit of a toll. But the main part of my body that really got affected was my breast tissue. So by the time I sort of finally started my periods around 15, which felt really late back then. So I thought there was something wrong with me because all my friends was having periods very young ages. But actually, when you actually look into the health of it, we shouldn't actually be starting our periods for a lot later. But again, it was like another obsession. Like I was, something was wrong with me. I didn't have any big boobs and I had no periods. But then finally at 15, the period started. So I was like, right, this is when, as far as I was aware, things should start changing. But much to my horror, my boobs didn't really develop anymore. And because I then was yo-yo dieting, very heavily yo-yo dieting, by the time I was 19, what had happened over the years was a lot of people, when we sort of yo-yo diet, the skin gets expanded and stretched. So it, you can get that dropping of the skin. And that's what happened to my breasts. So nowhere else, fortunately, nowhere else on my body had had that. So by the time I was 19, um, I had someone make a comment. It was like, you just look like you've breastfed two kids. Now, you don't want to be telling a 19-year-old who's already got small boobs that were very saggy as well at this point that you just look like you've breastfed because it was like it created... I already had body shame around me anyway. And I had this total self-loathe of what, you know, a breast should look like. And now I've got these little empty sacks because of all these years of sort of binging and dieting... And for me as well, I then had the small breast and around the breast, I had like the big areola bit of around it as well. So that pretty much covered the breast. So for me, I was so insecure with my boobs. And even when I was growing up and really desperately wanted to have breasts, like you think by the time I think I was 12, I was getting my mum to take me to, I don't know if any of you remember Tammy Girl. Um, and they had like bras for, you know, teens that, 
and it was basically like this little tiny piece of material, no padding. So it sort of make you feel like you were the, you know, I wanted to feel like I was a woman. I wanted to feel like I was a girl because I guess if you look at marketing and things as well that are portrayed to us, that part of being female is to have breasts as something that was what was shown to me and around me and big boobs were always kind of on TV and stuff like that as well because you go back to those sort of times we used to have like the page three models um, in the newspapers so again I'd be like oh my god these women are really sexy and you know they've got these big boobs and it was sort of like being programmed into me and my disappointment at having to go shopping even at 12 or 13 and get like a 30 double A bra and still have it was just like nips there was just nothing really there it was a lot growing up so I felt really, really insecure by the time I was, gosh, I was very insecure and very conscious of it. By the time I was 17, I was proper hating what I was seeing with my breasts. And I also had the bulimia going on as well. And I've been medicated with antidepressants at this point. So I had like, my emotions were sort of being numbed out by the tablets, but I still hated what I saw in the mirror. Um, any partners that I had, I'd always keep tops on. I wasn't sexually active really till I was 17. But even then, after that, I would always keep my top on and be like, no, you can't see my boobs or like, don't, please don't touch them. So I had like this big, big fear around that area of my chest. I'd be wearing like the, do you remember the chicken fillets that you could buy? I remember a really funny night, me and my friend were in the local pub and I think we was about 18. And she was the same, like both had small boobs. So we'd put these like chicken fillets in our breasts to sort of give us something because it would lift that tissue. And we was out dancing. I looked at her and I was like, oh my God, babe. And I was like, tuck your fillet in because it was sticking out. So she's like, oh my God, do you think anyone saw? I was like, I hope not. So we're like shoving it in. And I thought, you know what? This is ridiculous. I've, I've had enough. And I started to really research into cosmetic surgery. And obviously it's quite an expensive thing to be thinking about, especially, I guess, at that sort of age. But I'd set my mind to it. And by the time I was 18, I was working like free jobs anyway. So it didn't take me too long to save the money. And I paid for a surgery out of my own money. So I booked the surgery. It was the summer when I was just after, it was the summer just before I turned 20 or 21. I can't quite, yeah, 20 before I turned 20. And I just thought, fuck it. I wanted to do it. And I remember going into Harley Street because I was like, right, Harley Street is what sounded like it was the best one. And I went there by myself and I wore this black strappy top and the surgeon laid all the sort of breasts, silicone sizes out. And I was like, they're not big enough. Because I thought, if I'm going to do this, go big or go home, right? Because if I'm going to be spending, it was four and a half thousand pounds back then. If I'm going to be spending this, then I want to do it and know that I've had a change. And I didn't care that anyone was going to find out because I was going to go from small boobs to big boobs. But I'd already told people, like, I'm really not happy. And this is what I want to do. And back then, it wasn't really spoken about. So I kind of was like, it's okay because... As most of you do know me quite well, I'm, I wear my heart on my sleeve. So I was like, this is what I want to do. And, you know, people either say I was crazy or, you know, do what makes you happy. So anyway, the surgeon lays them all out. And I'm like, no, not big enough, not big enough. And he was like, well, if we go any bigger, it's not going to suit your frame. Because I was quite petite at this point. And um, I was like, I don't care. So he got me these implants out that were like 475cc. So they was, you know, big. And I shoved him down this strappy top that I was wearing on. I stood on his chair in the mirror and I was like, this is the tips that I want. And he was like, I don't think they're, I don't think they're right for your frame. And I was like, I'm paying. I didn't want to lift, even though he did advise it. I was just like, I know I've got enough droppy skin, but if you just put an implant in, it was going to fill up. Whereas normally, if the skin's dropping, they want to do a lift and move the breast. And I was like, I was just wary of having all that done. And it was a much more expensive surgery as well. And I was like, no, I just want you to fill me in. So I booked the surgery and on the morning of the surgery, I did shit myself and I always said to him, I think I'm going to go too big. Can I go one size smaller? And he said, look, if I've got them, then you can be smaller. But by this point, I was sort of going under the anaesthetic. So when I woke up, I didn't know what he'd put in or what he hadn't. And to be honest, they were enormous, but they were also swollen. And I was so happy. But he did say to me, I did find the 450 cc. So he'd put those in. And over the six months, when you're healing, it's the swelling obviously goes down. And I was disappointed. Like I wanted these humongous, and they were still humongous, but I was almost disappointed. I was like, I wish I'd gone for 
So, you know, I was thinking it's so funny. I still wanted to go bigger. But when I look back at pictures now, like they was huge. And as soon as I got back, they was like, don't, you know, don't um, put bras on or anything. You have to wear these ones that sleep in for like six weeks. And so as soon as they was off, I went and bought padded underwired bra so I could push and have these huge boobs. And my goodness, like I love them. I don't regret anything because... They gave me the confidence which I couldn't find in myself at the time. And it gave me the confidence to step into my power more so because I felt I felt more like a woman, I guess, having that. Because, like I said, growing up, I always associated having big boobs with being attractive and being, being feminine. So for a long time these boobs served me really well and you know it lots of other people shortly got their breasts implants done as well after me and it gave a lot of women sort of I guess that confidence to go you know what actually she seems a lot happier I'm gonna do it too and um, my friend's mum she had like smaller implants put in because where she'd breastfed over the years she's like I just want something that makes me feel a bit fuller now a couple of years down the line though um there was that big pip pip scandal where implants were rupturing and stuff like that but again i hadn't been contacted by my surgeons or anything so as far as i was aware I'm, i was like i didn't need to get anything checked i was like oh they're fine but what i did notice over time was i just looked a lot more swollen in general like um no matter how much i kind of trained i felt like i couldn't quite lose weight i felt like my face looked quite bloated after i had implants my hips and my arms definitely look different. But again, I didn't correlate anything to do with the implants. I just thought it was me not training hard enough or, you know, I my body just wasn't responding to how I used to train because I used to train excessively. So I still didn't correlate anything to do with the implants. I came off the pill as well when I was, I think, maybe 27. And or maybe it's a bit later. I came off the pill properly. Yeah, about 27. And that's when I noticed like my arms and stuff started to get leaner and, and, and change to an extent. But again, I still felt like my body still felt quite bloated a lot of the time. And then over time, I started to notice one of my breasts seemed to be shrinking. And I remember saying to the partner I was with at the time, like, I'm sure this boob is getting smaller. And he was like, no, you're being, you're being a weirdo. You're just, you're being strange. So it started to really get to me because over time it really started to be significant. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to book the doctors. So I went to see the GP and he asked me, he said, did you have the pips? And I was like, no, no, no. And that was years ago now. That was like, you know, seven years later. So he went, I'm going to send you for a scan. So he sent me to the local hospital and I had a scan and they put like the gel on my breast and he was like, oh, you've got a rupture. And I was like, oh my God, what does that mean? And he was like, well, the silicon's potentially leaking out into your body. So I was like, oh my God. He was like, I'm going to send you for um, a scan where they put you in the machine and they'll scan all around the body. So they, to be honest, they were very quick and I got seen um, fairly shortly afterwards and they confirmed there was a rupture. So the NHS were happy to remove the implants, but just remove them and just be left. So I was, horrif I was terrified because I thought I can't just have these implants out because the skin that I had before was already droopy and whatever. And now the implants have been and they've stretched that skin. And what was actually happening was I wasn't having a shrinking boob. It was the other one that was leaking that was expanding. So it's creating almost like this tubular sort of breast. And the other one was still intact. So the one that was actually leaking was causing this breast to get bigger, which was what was making the other one appear smaller. The problem was finding a surgeon now that was willing to operate on me. Because I thought, I'm not going to go through NHS because I want to be left with something. Because the fear of going through having breasts like that as well even worse than what I was before I had the operation terrified me plus the fear of because people had now known me for years um where I'd been working in the fitness industry and I'd always been like aiming with big boobs and they actually looked pretty even though it was big because I didn't have a lift they sort of sat quite nicely and where I was a little bit of a bigger frame then they sort of fitted in and people were always like do you you know she got fake boobs or hasn't she and if anyone asked me directly I'd be honest and be like yeah but if they didn't ask I wouldn't necessarily offer that information and where I wasn't sure about having kids or anything at this point, they was like, well, if you have a lift and an implant out and do that option, 
then you'd need another operation if you have kids because it's going to stretch the skin. So I thought, oh, I really don't know what to do. So, and then the surgeon said to my horror, because at this point I've been thinking, they're too big for me now. Like my frame's changing over the years. And he was like, well, we should actually go bigger because where that one's um, split inside and it's making that tissue stretch even more, he was like, if we don't put a big implant in there, you're going to have like this ball and socket where the, they're hanging down. And I said to him, I don't want to go bigger. I actually wanted to go smaller. But again, I wasn't confident enough to totally have them out. Even though in my heart, that's what I really wanted, but I still wasn't brave enough. So it took me eight months to find a surgeon that was willing to operate on me. Because at this point, they're like, look, they've been in there so long. We don't know what we're going to pull out. There could be like cancerous cells in there as well. So we don't know what we're dealing with. And a lot of surgeons refused to do the operation. So ironically, I ended up back at Harley Street. And Harley at the time, with the implant ruptures, if you'd have booked on credit card, you'd have got a full refund back because of everything that happened because the credit card would have insured you. Because I was growing up and I paid for it out of my savings, I wasn't insured. So I then had to repay for the surgery to be repaired, even though it was being done by the same company that the rupture had been caused by them. And it did turn out they were PIP implants. The reason they'd never contacted me is because they'd liquidated at the time and then rebranded themselves so that, again, there's no sort of company to sort of go after necessarily. There was big court cases going on and actually recently there was a case one, but because I wasn't aware of having pips at the time, I couldn't unfortunately get involved with it. So I missed that deadline to potentially be involved in that case. But, you know, it's one of those things. So anyway... Finally, after eight months, I found a surgeon that was willing to operate on me, and ironically, it was back at Harley Street. And to be honest, he was fantastic, and I said to him, I don't want a bigger implant put in. Like, surely you can do something to sort of have something a bit smaller. And he was like, well, I can't promise what they're gonna look like. And I said, look, I trust my body. Like, I've got really stretchy, good skin. Like, I know, I know that it's gonna repair great. So he went in, so, so the morning of the surgery he said to me like, I have to be honest if we pull something out that isn't right if there is something in there that doesn't look right because I'd watched loads of YouTubes at this point of ruptured implants being pulled out and they get pulled out like broken fragments of congealed stuff and I terrified myself and he was like look if I go in there and there is like a lot of stuff I'm gonna have to take the implants out and just stitch you up and hoover what's in there and then you're gonna have to come back and have the implants in it another time and this was the morning of the surgery and I was like oh my god I was like, you know what, just do it. I'm, I'm here now, let's just do it. So when I woke up, I was like, have I got have I got boobs? Have I not got bo boobs? Like, so he's come in the room and he was like, good news. Yes, the implant was ruptured. So he brought them in. One of them was clear because that still had the silicon in and the other one was yellow. He was like, fortunately, the ruptured one was intact. So the silicon had sort of leaked out and the body fluid had leaked in. What's good is when you do have uh, implants, your body naturally over time forms a natural capsule around it which engulfs the implant and then it will build scar tissue around it to hold the implant in because it's a foreign object so he was like was able to hoover everything out and the majority of the stuff was in there thank god so and what he'd managed to do as well he took out my 450 cc and he'd put 300 cc in the ruptured bigger one and he'd put like a 250 in the other or something like that so they looked more balanced and they looked fantastic to be honest they healed they went in they were smaller so I'd gone from at this point the ruptured breast I think I'd been like a 32 F or G at this point with the ruptured one the other one was like a 32 E now he'd sort of brought me back into alignment and I was like a 32 double D E and they looked really really good but then I started to think you know what this was a good move and I felt better but I still had that sort of bloated look and then literally two months after I'd had the implant swapped my whole life changed pretty much overnight Um, I was married I just bought a property with my partner and all of a sudden my marriage came to a sudden end and my whole life just had a massive flip around and there I was worried about maybe people saying oh she's got implants and too scared to have my implants taken out and now the whole world unfortunately at this point knew what happened in my marriage in my personal life because unfortunately it was also exposed at work um, and it was a very very tough time because 
those of you that know me, I was sort of going through this breakup with my partner. We worked together and everyone had to put their 10 pence in because it was literally, it was just literally a shit show of a, of a, of a breakup. Not that I'm saying my breakup was any worse than anyone else's, but it was a really tough time. And those of you that know me will know sort of what happened because the whole freaking gym found out. I felt like I was almost on one of those reality TVs where everything just sort of just got exposed. And so anyway, I fortunately got through that and it was a really rough ride, but it made me really think, you know what, I really, really don't want these implants in anymore. They're plastic. My body still doesn't quite feel like mine. I'm still feeling like they're almost too big for my frame. I just didn't feel comfortable in my skin. And what's a shame is they were probably some of the best fake boobs I've personally seen that looked natural as well because they weren't lifted. So... And where I changed how I sort of connected to myself and how I thought of myself, because now that everyone knew so much about my personal life at the gym, I didn't really give a shit if people now knew that I wasn't, I had fake tits. I was so over it. So I contacted the surgeon that had done the op like the year or two before. And I said, look, I want them out. And he was like, oh my goodness, like they look so good. Like you was... And I was like, I just don't feel like it's in alignment with who I am anymore. I just, I'd had like a shedding. I just didn't want to have them in. I can't explain it, but I remember waking up. I think it was uh, one New Year's and I was just like, I just want them out. So I went to see him again. And by this point, they've got this technology that's amazing. So he gets this iPad thing and he takes pictures of me and he scans me. And he was like, this is what you're going to look like if we do a natural lift and remove the implant altogether because at this point I could now have a natural lift because the skin had been stretched and stuff over the years whereas if I'd gone in at 19 with these small little boobs that were saggy if I'd have had a natural lift I'd have just been left with fuck all whereas now I could do a natural lift because the skin had been stretched over the years and they had skin to sort of play with so for a lift they sort of cut a triangle at the bottom and then stitch it together and then what, I, what the thing I was most excited about is because around the nipple, like the areola, it was still like a really big area for me and I always felt like it was too big for my breast. So he was like, we're going to have to remove and make that smaller so it would be in alignment with your small boobs like once you get them. And I was like, that's what I'd always wanted. And I thought, I had to go through this journey almost in a way to get the extra stripped skin to then be able to have the lift, to have the nipples and everything moved and everything like that. So he did a scan and he showed me and he went, we could put a small, tiny, tiny implant in if you would like. And to be honest, I looked and I thought, well, what's the point if I'm going to do that? I was like, I just don't want anything in anymore. So he scanned me and I was like, yeah, let's do it. Um, this time I paid for it and booked it on credit card because I thought, God forbid anything goes wrong, like you're fully insured with a credit card as well. So I'd learned that lesson um, from the years before. And I booked and went in for the surgery. However, I was still a heavy gym trainer, I'm an instructor, I was training a lot, a lot, a lot, and now I was told, because with if you just have an implant in, you can go back to the gym or exercise after two weeks. With a lift, they say no exercise for six weeks. So now I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my goodness, like I'm not gonna be able to exercise for six weeks. Oh god, like am I gonna be able to cope? Because I was still teaching my classes. I'd gotten into yoga at this point, but not not the yoga that I'm into now. I was into the fitness, the fast yoga, the sweaty yoga, the rocket yoga. That like, gotta get that burn. And he was like, absolutely, no, no yoga, no this, this in six weeks. So thinking about it, I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna actually do this. So what I decided was just to go for it and be brave because perhaps. I wouldn't need six weeks. I thought maybe I could go back to the gym or something earlier. So I went in for the surgery, absolutely shitting myself because now I'm freaking out that I'm gonna have no boobs. So I've gone from, you know, I'm gonna be going from like a nice 32 double DE to potentially down to a 32 AB. And I was like, oh my goodness. 
And I've got those apps. You can get the, these apps on your phones. I've seen my friends use them on nights out when they can alter their bodies, like for pictures. So I downloaded one of these apps as well, like the night before the op, to sort of see what I'm going to look like with these small boobs. And obviously they were just, it's not a realistic account, but I was taking pictures of myself in clothes and trying to shrink it down. And I was like, am I just going to look fat with small tits? That was like my biggest, biggest fear of, of that sort of change of frame because in my mind, to have an hourglass figure, you need to have these big boobs, small waist and the hips and the bum. So I'm like, oh God, if I'm taking that away, am I just going to look? And my friends and everyone was freaking out and they was like, you're going to be fine. And the partner I was with at the time, like he really looked after me and he was like, you know, this is what you want. And he really did guide me through so much. And I'm so, so grateful. Um, even the morning of the surgery, I was like, oh, I don't think I want to do this, oh my God. And he was like, remember what you wanted, like, this has been a big deal. So anyway, went in in the morning and literally by the evening, I had no implants left and I had a lift. So got discharged from hospital that night, went home. Um, I don't take like codeine or anything, so I just took some light painkillers and went to sleep. I woke up the next day and totally freaked out. Totally, totally freaked out. I was like, I've got to look, because now you've got this thing that sucks you in. So it literally looked like I was like, had nothing. And I was like, oh my God, what have I done? Like, tote, tote freaked out. And to my partner at the time, I was like, I was waiting for this to happen, but you're absolutely fine. I was like, oh, and I just kept looking in the mirror and I was like, what have I done? Oh my goodness. And then I was like, well, worst case scenario, if you absolutely hate it, you can put chicken fillets back in your bras or so I was trying to be logical but I was also freaking out the good thing was I'd booked it and it was summer so and he said to me like even though no exercise exercise in the gym you could start walking the next day and I was literally up and walking every day and over the next two weeks you can't drive and I walked pretty much every day not fast walking and what I found was I fell in love with walking and being in nature so I thought oh this is good I was still freaking out about not exercising. Now, by week three, I was thinking, oh, maybe I could exercise. And I thought, you know what? I could feel I couldn't. I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna do this. I'm, I'm just gonna have to go back to the gym and just tell people what to do. And also I was freaking out because now I was gonna have to go back to the gym having 32E double D to potentially 32. I was like a 32A at this point. So he said, it's gonna take about a year for the tissue just to sort of grow and rebalance out. So I went back to work and I was wearing these big baggy jumpers but I used to wear them anyway and I thought well you're gonna have to sort of do something about this because the gym I worked at people were like asking they just come straight up to you and ask questions so what I did was I wrote a blog and put it all down there as well so if anyone asked like what happened to your and I'm like oh read it on the blog so in a way I was like how can I handle this anxiety of people asking me questions because I don't even know how I feel about it so I put it all down in a blog so if anyone did want to know any information or be nosy I was like it's on a blog and you can actually read it on my website or you can read it on my WordPress. By week four now, I started to notice that my body actually was starting to look better because before the operation leading up, I trained like a maniac I was because I was so scared about not training. So now my body's almost had like four weeks of resting, just walking regularly, not doing any intense exercise. And I was like, hmm, I haven't gained any weight. If anything, I'd got smaller and I started to look less bloated. And I thought, that's interesting. By week five, I tried my luck and tried to do a little bit of exercise and it didn't feel comfortable. So I was like, no, 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 I'm not ready yet. But by week six, I was able to start doing my yoga and bits and pieces again. But it had broken a pattern for me. I, before my natural lift and implant removal, I was teaching classes and actively taking part in them like heavily. Like on a Monday, I'd teach four classes back to back. Same on Tuesday, I'd teach in the evenings, teach in the mornings, Wednesdays, teach in the evenings. I used to teach loads. Saturday mornings, be doing doubles and triples and physically doing them. One thing that I know now is I don't need to do them. Like I love doing my yoga each day because that stretches my body, but some days it might just be a yin class. So it's a lot more balanced. But by having the implants out, it showed me that just by walking, and I was just a bit more conscious of how I ate, that you don't need to punish yourself for hours in the gym training or sort of go through these sort of grueling exercises, which I used to do, and push really heavy weights. I was like, I need to get leaner. I have to build muscle and push all these weights. When actually I got leaner from taking more rest, lifting lighter weights and training more body weight, yoga literally has blown my mind. 
my nervous system's obviously a lot more calm as well because I'm not stressing it out by overtraining anymore. I realised as well that I'd stopped being so obsessed with how much I weighed. I'd stopped freaking out so much about it as well because finally I'd had like this whole six weeks of not, you know, not training in the gym. I mean, I've been a gym junkie since I was probably 14. You know, as soon as I was 14, joined the YMCA, cross trainer, running. As soon as I was like 16, into classes, all the body pump, everything. I was already training to be an instructor by the time I was 22. Like, I was, I was obsessed with classes, obsessed with running, like doing all these sort of high impacty stuff. I was either like, it's, it's, it's just got to be all or nothing almost. And I always had that, it's got to be everything. I'm a Virgo, so we can be really disciplined and just keep going and going on that path. Like even when I was training for my wedding, like before my rage broke down, but six in the morning, be doing my fasted cardio, be doing my weights in the afternoon, plus teaching my classes, and then be doing a second weight session in the evening. When I make, decide to do something, I'm just so on it and disciplined. So anyway, I also noticed that I was nowhere near as bloated. When I started doing a lot of research on implant illness, because there's a whole loads of pages on there, so breast implant illness, like where the body is attacking the immune system because you have got the plastic in there, especially if you've got a leaking um, implant, but even if you haven't, the body's attacking it because it's plastic, it's a foreign object. The, you look quite bloated because it causes water retention because it requires water to sort of attack the body as well. So it gave me that bloated sort of swollen feeling. And as soon as I had my implants out, like I said, my, my body changed so much. I couldn't believe, even in my face and my jawline, it really, really started to change differently once I had my implants out. So I was like, gosh, this is actually a thing. And I was being, um, there was also, I had a lot of um, numbness happening in my hands. And once my implants were out, like touch wood, that's all stopped. And again, numbness, um, limb numbness is um, a symptom of breast implant illness. I had severe hair loss as well when um, the rupture was happening. And again, I didn't know that was correlation. So it's all been like a bit of an eye opener for me. So I guess for me, having my implants out has made me realize that I don't need to exercise the way I used to think. It's about how you move. I also recognize that I had so many patterns around how I trained and how I appeared. And I used to always sort of punish myself and overtrain. Whereas now, like with the yoga and stuff, I just feel so much more comfortable in myself. I don't even need to wear a bra half the time. Like I don't even know why we wear bras as women. And to be honest, I know it lifts the breast tissue, but I've been doing a lot of the cold showers as well with the Wim Hof um, techniques. And when the cold water hits you, it's really good for toning the skin and the skin contracts. I thought, God, it's like your breasts are almost getting a a muscular contraction so again like that's kept them in really really good shape I do lymph uh, drainage like body brushing like a couple of times a week as well and that helps drain any old fluid I really 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 am so much happier in my own skin I still sometimes find it strange looking at pictures of when I had big boobs but like I said I don't regret it I had to go on this whole journey to end up having the skin so they could like move it and, and get the nipples that I've always kind of dreamed of, which makes you laugh. But you know, I'm really proud of the journey and I don't regret any of it. I think if you are someone that is thinking maybe about having implants in, like really make sure you research potentially what does happen to the body inside. If you're someone that has got implants in and you've been thinking about getting them out, like obviously get in touch and I can sort of um, guide you through some things as well because sometimes it's talking to someone that's been on the journey because it's so freaking scary the thought of having these big boobs and they almost became like an identification for me and I was like well who am I if I don't have big tits I'd almost be like even when I went to work meetings like people just always knew me Amy with the big boobs so now I was just Amy but again like it's been really cool because I'm really proud of the figure and what I've got now and I really really do love that part of me now whereas before I wouldn't even look in the mirror at myself and the ironic thing was, even when I had the implants in and they looked great, I was still so conscious about taking my bra off because I still didn't like my nipples and I still didn't like, you know, because they weren't a lift, they looked really good, but, you know, they were slightly different in shape and size and over the years as they, they changed. 
and where the leak had happened unbeknown to me at the time, it was, it was very stressful watching them change. And the stress that I went through even finding a surgeon, because eight months of knowing that something's leaking in your body and it was just a really tough time. And again, watching all the YouTube docs, documentaries of what they find inside you just didn't help my mentality. I do really, really feel so much happier. And I love the fact that I can look back at the journey. And sometimes it does really break my heart because when I look back at the girl that was before her op at 19 and I see some of the pictures and I was like, there was nothing wrong with you. But obviously you can't help how you feel if there is something inside of you. And like I said, like my breasts back then were like, I guess like someone had said to me, just like you breastfed. But no 19 year old without any kids is gonna kind of want to hear that, especially when you're sort of growing into becoming a woman, it just really knocks my confidence. So I hope that sort of gives you a bit of info about the boob journey and I am super, super happy living with small titties again. Um, and I love the fact that I can buy, if I want to buy a bikini now or anything like that, like before when I had the big implants in, you'd have to go shopping and get like a size 18 to, just to fit them in. Whereas now I'm like, oh my God, I can get into like a small that's not worrying about my nipple hanging out or anything like that. Or So again, it's been, it's been wonderful. And for me, my favourite thing is just not needing to wear bras anymore. Like sometimes I wear them like when I'm going out and about, but generally like being so comfortable that I don't need to worry about it. It's lovely. So anyway, that's episode nine of the journey of self-love through self-care and just sort of filling you in and just feeling proud of myself and just wanting to share that story. So have a wonderful day or wonderful evening wherever you are. Lots of peace and love. And please give this page a like if you enjoyed and drop me a comment below and send this on to someone maybe that you might think in, would enjoy to hear the story or might be going through something where they're questioning some stuff. So I'm always here. Take care.